Hi, today I start the Bluetooth low energy service example with the NRF51822 from Nordic Semiconductor and an example from Maxim Integrated, the Max6675, a K-type thermal couple to digital converter. And today we have a look at all the parts are not included in the Bluetooth service. The reading of the Max66 Seven, five, and the use of the thermal couple and uh, look out what's all needed for the Bluetooth service. First, let's have a look at the MAX6675 datasheet. It's a cold junction compensated thermal couple to digital converter and we can use it from zero degrees Celsius up to 700 degrees Celsius in steps of 0.25 degrees Celsius and it have a resolution of 12 bits and a simple SPI compatible serial interface. First let's have a look at the supply voltage. It have a wide range of supply voltage so we can easily run it at 3.3 volt like our NAF51822 and we have an error at 3.3 volt about plus minus 5 degrees Celsius. Then we have a look at the conversion time. It needs a little bit time. It says about 170 to 220 milliseconds. And let's have a, have a look at the data we can get. We have to read 16 bits from 15 to 0 and we see that our Degree starts from bit 3 to bit 14. So we have to ignore all the first 1 to 3 bits. So first have a look at the wiring. We need VCC 3.3 volt and ground. And for SPI communication we need the MISO master in slave out and the clock pin and also the client select. And optionally we can use a UART converter to read all our logging information. You have to wire the RX pin to the TX pin from the UART converter and the TX pin from the NIF51822 to the RX pin to the UART converter. And we need to ground the UART converter so that all signals have the same ground reference. For this demonstration I use my BLE adapter board for the NIF51822. If you want to look the video about the BLE adapter it's video number 15 in the series and you can click above on the card. It's all about the schematics, the building of the board and the soldering of the Bluetooth module. Just use the ready Gerber files to order it at your own board house. And here is the board on the bench on the breadboard and with all the wiring and the sensor and the programmer and also the K-type thermal couple and a USB to UART converter just for some debugging and logging. So we can have a closer look there's the Bluetooth antenna. The only flaw on this module is there is no RTC clock. So we have to use a synthesized RTC signal. So let's do a quick code walkthrough. First we have to define all our header files as usual. Then we use the real-time clock inside the routine and I use the instance one because we want to implement all the Bluetooth functional. So the soft devices blocks all real-time clock zero. So I use a non-block real-time clock, the instance one. And also we use the SPI instance. In this case I use zero and we do some configure for our max 6675 and let's have a look at the main routine we define some instance inside our max configuration then we initialize the logging and give some start logging information then we configure all our gpio pins and 
we configure the SPI and initialize the routine for the MAX 6675 and start the low frequency clock and the real time clock and then our main routine goes to the sleep mode. So let's have a look into all the other routines. First, our GPIO config, because we want to do some blinking, we configure all our blinking pin. Then we configure our SPI bus as usual, set our clock pin. The MOSI pin is not used, but the MISO pin, because we want to read some data from the MAX 6675. And our our client select is also steered outside the SPI, so we use only a dummy configuration. And then we set the frequency as usual, the mode and the byte order, and then we initialize the driver for SPI. Then I set up the low frequency clock. In the real time clock, I want to set up the handler routine every 0.5 seconds. So I initialize the real time clock with the RTC handler. Then we set the tick handler to false and we set our compare channel zero that it sends out every 500 milliseconds. And then we enable our timer. And so every 0.5 seconds our handler routine is called and first we toggle our blinking LED pin then we check if our position is even or odd and if it's even we then we prepare our reading and if our position is odd we read the max 6675 chip and put out some logging information about the temperature then we enable our real time clock again and clear our counter register so let's have a look at the routines for the MAX 6675. First, we initialized, set our client select pin. Then we have a prepare routine that's only clear the client select pin. Then we do our reading. We read out two bytes for the 16-bit temperature reading. Then we set our client select pin high and convert the 8-bit reading to 16-bit and shift it three time because the first three bits are not used as a temperature reading. So let's have a look at the configuration of the GPIO pins. It's inside the custom board. We have our SPI master pin set. The clock pin is on pin 3. MISO pin is on pin 4 and the client select or slave select pin is at GPIO pin 9. And let's have a look at the output pin for the UART. It's at, it's defined at the NAF lock backend and here we see our configuration about our TX pin and the configuration of our RX pin. And the two other pins are not used because we don't use the hardware flow control. So let's have a look at the make file. It's only a small make file. We use our custom board configuration. That's the custom board.h file and then we include all our needed object files like the driver for SPI, the driver for the clock, the driver for the real time clock, our max 6675 routines and the main file. So we can clean and then build our program just about one and a half second. Just to have a reference for our temperature reading, I use my soldering iron to check the K-type thermal couple from the Fluke multimeter. And let's have a look at the reading. It's about 300, 310 degrees. But I think the temperature exchange between the soldering tip and the K-type thermal couple from the Fluke, it's not so great. So the reading is not so accurate. Now we can compare the reading with the MAX 6675 and it's nearly about what we read from the display from our soldering iron. There's one big disadvantage with the cheap ordered thermal couple maybe of the converter. It's very very slow and I have to wait a long time before I get the real reading. 
So after our hardware is ready and is tested, we have to have a look at all the Bluetooth functionality, the central, the peripheral, the advertising, the characteristics, the profile, about security, how we can read attributes, write attributes, the metadata, the properties, how we connect our client or disconnect, how we go to the sleep mode, then how we use events and interact and handler and steer the GPIO, the SPI bus with Bluetooth, then how we flash the soft device, what's with the antenna, what's the maximum distance to our device. And overall, we have also have a look at the power consumption of our device because we want to use Bluetooth low energy and not just normal Bluetooth. And our device should have a long lifetime with running on a battery. So the West start to go into deep to Bluetooth low energy and Bluetooth in general. We have a look at the Bluetooth specification, the core of Bluetooth. And as an example, I use the version 4.2 like this. And it's only have 2,772 pages. So we have a look at all the pages with the Bluetooth specification. And after we read all the pages, then we use all the appendums for the Bluetooth specification. And then we are the master in Bluetooth and maybe a master in Bluetooth low energy. So what's the next open points? We have to implement a custom Bluetooth low energy service with a 128-bit UUID. Then we can have a look at predefined services by the Bluetooth standard. And we can change our service to a predefined service with a 16-bit UUID. And after that, we can have a look at the power consumption from our set because it's very power hungry. And after all this, we can have a look at the Bluetooth client. Maybe we use our mobile phone. So I use Android and we can implement a Android Bluetooth low energy client. So thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video and give me a thumbs up. Or if you not have already done, please subscribe my channel. And all the source codes can be found at github and for some more information you can visit my blog at blogspot so have a nice day and i hope you learned something